first reading is from a book called Thanks, How Practicing Gratitude Makes You Happier. Our book of the month is actually the Gratitude Journal that's available in the bookstore. So I'm randomly choosing readings this month. And this was actually our book of the month last November. So you can go back and review if you want. There was something from last year that stuck with me in this book, and here it is. Pulitzer Prize-winning poet Edward Arlington Robinson wrote that there are two kinds of gratitude. The sudden kind we feel for what we take, and the larger kind we feel for what we give. Gratitude with a small g is the gratitude we feel for the benefits we have been provided, for what we get from others. Gratitude with a capital G, on the other hand, is gratitude for the contribution that we make. It is the giving of thanksgiving. This illustrates a profound truth about gratitude. When we give the gift of gratitude with the right spirit, genuinely from our heart, we get as much or more in return for giving the thanks. <laughs> hmm, I'm going to try that sentence again. <laughs> We get as much or more in return for giving the thanks as the receiver gets for receiving it. When we are truly grateful, we are led to experience life situations in ways that call forth from us an openness to engage with the world in order to share and increase the very goodness we have received. It is the feeling of connection with humanity, emerging from a sense of wonder and joy, that participating in an intricate network of existence brings. Today's affirmation, I'll read it through once and then I'll invite you to join me. The fullness of life is mine. I give thanks for every appearance, every condition in my life, for I walk in the perfect faith, acceptance, and realization that life is good. I live in the vision of an ever greater tomorrow and know with an ever more grateful heart that heaven is at hand right now. And so it is. Please stand and join me with conviction. The fullness of life is mine. I give thanks for every appearance, every condition in my life, for I walk in the perfect faith, acceptance, and realization that life is good. I live in the vision of an ever greater tomorrow and know with an ever more grateful heart that heaven is at hand right now, and so it is. My heart is grateful right now for that music. Grateful for Andy Harrison. Catherine, thanks for coming today and joining us. Because all month long we're talking about gratitude, aren't we? We are riding the wave of November, which, you know, the November theme is kind of gratitude, isn't it? And so we are here today to talk a little bit more about how do we get grateful for the things that we have been given. Now, how many of you, um, so far anyway, let's see, we've been about, we're about 16 minutes in. How many of you are grateful you're here so far? Yeah. Yeah. So far, you're kind of a little bit of an inspiring experience. You feel a little more connected. Might you even feel a little bit of gratitude for the experience that you're having this morning of community? See, we're talking today about getting grateful for community. What does it mean <clears throat> to be grateful? It means, if you look it up in the dictionary, it is the quality of being thankful, a readiness, to show appreciation. Are you ready to so show some appreciation for the first 17 now minutes? Let's do that. <laughs> you see, gratitude, the practice of gratitude uses the law of attention to put our attention uh, to put our focus on what's working. The law of attention says what we put our attention on increases, right? The universe is created in such a way that we have the free will to be whatever we choose to be. And yet, if we put on the mind of God, we find ourselves adopting the qualities of God, things like love, peace, joy, humility, 
harmony, order, wisdom, grace, intelligence. And so we put on that mind and we begin to realize that if we practice gratitude, we begin to put our attention on what's working. What? And you know what? We could even begin to practice um, a readiness to show appreciation for the tough times in our lives. Not because we like to be beaten up, okay? It's not that. We show appreciation for the tough times in our lives because of what they are here to teach us. And when we open our hearts to the message that is being given to us through the tough experiences of life, suddenly we begin to see them in a different light. And we begin to recognize that the infinite intelligence in the universe, the living one, the power and the presence and the love of God is operating through every circumstance to call us forth into our divine beingness. Now, week one, we talked about getting grateful for God because I don't know about you, but I had some experiences of God coming up that made me not feel so grateful for God. How about you? Anybody else? You know, I had to work through some stuff. So can we anchor ourselves, anchor ourselves in, in a readiness to show appreciation for the divinity from which we spring when we understand it rightly. Do you see those experiences of God for which I'm not so grateful are not God's fault. I was not seeing God rightly. I was not seeing God by putting on the mind of love, by putting on the mind of intelligence and wisdom. And then last week we talked about getting grateful for family no matter what. Anybody have any like tough family things ever happened for you in your life? Things that perhaps was a little hard to feel grateful for? I encourage you to engage in the practice of getting grateful for family. And if you'd like to know a little more about that, you can go look at the video from last week. Today we're talking about getting grateful for community. Now I already checked in with you and you're already grateful, right? All right, I think we're good. Now let's talk a little bit about community because it's important to understand the role that spiritual community plays in our lives and why it is critically important. First, what does community mean? I love Latin roots of words. Calm always means worth, uh, with, calm, right? And what's the second half of the word community? Unity. unity. What does that mean? Singular, oneness, with unity, with a sense of singular oneness. And actually, there's a little Latin word buried in community when you look it up and look at the etymology and that word is munis m-u-n-i-s c-o-m-m-u-n-i-t-y right what does that mean think municipal services right municipal it means service the word munis means gift or service so here we are being in the gift of spiritual community with one another with a sense of unity and connectedness and oneness. And I love it that our church's name is what? Unity. Right? How cool is that? You see, community is about coming together for a common purpose. A sports team, ask Patty, she'll tell you, is a community, right? The yoga class becomes a community. In our foundations class, we are developing learning community, right? And so we come together for a common purpose with a sense of unity and oneness and a sense of bringing our gifts, bringing service to the table, we come together to be about that. Now, specifically in spiritual community, what are we coming together for? To deepen and grow in God. To deepen and grow our spiritual practice. Our purpose as a spiritual community is to facilitate and support you in that spiritual growth. Awakening to our spiritual nature and making the world a better place. Because as we each learn and grow, we make our little corner of the world a better place. And when we make our little corner of the world a better place, what happens? Somebody else is making their corner of the world a better place and pretty soon the world's a better place. What? I love how that works. But you know what? We have to be about it. And so we come together in spiritual community to deepen, to grow, to wake up, and to become more anchored in faith that the universe is in a conspiracy for our good. That the infinite life of God wants only to express, and we can give it that opportunity 
by participating fully and with a sense of commitment to spiritual community. How cool is that? Now, how many of you ever heard of a Mobius strip? I wonder if I can make one. A Mobius strip, piece of paper, right? So think of yourself this way. This is you. This is the exterior you. This is the interior you. So the exterior you is who we see. Yeah, you're cleaning, you're going to the grocery store, you're doing your life, you go to work, you yell at the kids, whatever it is that you do. We don't yell at our children here. That was a joke. (laughs) Just saying. (laughs) So this side of the piece of paper is your external life. This side of the paper is your internal life. What it is that you do within you, your thinking processes, your feeling processes, how you engage in your individual spiritual practice and spiritual growth. Got it? Now, you can see this side, right? Now, let me, let me put it this way. We can see this side. We can't see this side, can we? We don't always know what's going on inside of you, do we? It might be kind of scary if we did sometimes, Yeah. But the thing is, is that to be whole, we grow and we embrace both sides of us. Make sense? And now, if you know what a Mobius strip is, I can take this piece of paper. It's kind of not quite long enough. Let me try it this way. A little thinner might work. I can take this little piece of paper that's getting skinnier by the moment. Outer me, inner me. A Mobius strip simply twists the paper and we reconnect it. We connect it at the end, right? And now we have a circle. Now the interesting thing is, what I said earlier is this is the outer me, right? If I just follow this around, what happened? It became the inner. What? And if I continue to follow it around on the inside, what? It became the outer. Outer, 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 inner, 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 outer, inner, inner, outer, 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 outer. And if I follow this Mobius strip around, I begin to realize that it's a perfect demonstration of what we really are, an infinite oneness, an infinite unity, learning and deepening and growing in our individual life and externally in our spiritual community. And we need both things to be whole. Are you with me? So what's really, really beautiful is that I can know when I am in my daily spiritual practice or when I'm wrestling with something deep inside that doesn't feel very good, you may not know that, but I know you've got my back, right? I know whether my internal self is completely at peace or whether my internal self is struggling I know that I have all of you to support me. I know that I have my broader spiritual community to support me. I have my little group that I do every month. I have my prayer partner that I call sometimes every day. (laughs) I have spiritual community that supports both the inner and the outer life. Do you want some of that? It's a beautiful, beautiful thing. And so I'm supported by the crowd when I am alone doing my internal process and I am fully present to myself in the crowd. I am fully present to myself with you. And my task, the thing that I get to do by being fully present with the inner and the outer when I am with you is I get to learn and grow. And you're here to support me and love me no matter what. No matter what. Have you ever behaved badly? I haven't, (laughs) but I was thinking maybe a few people here, maybe, just a few of us, because we're really pretty perfect, aren't we? No. I mean, we have all behaved badly, right? Aren't you glad that the people you behave badly with still love you and put up with you? (laughs) Aren't you grateful? (laughs) Aren't you grateful that people can see that you're learning and growing and expanding? Aren't you grateful that people see and know the truth of you. See, the job of spiritual community 
is to know the truth of you no matter what. Whether I, you know, a lot of times, and let me just say, as the minister, a lot of times people like build up this idea of me, but I trust me, I got as much of whatever as all the rest of y'all. <sighs> With the added problem that I get to play it all out in public. <laughs> just saying. <laughs> you see, but the thing is, is that I know you have my back. I know that I have spiritual community that is going to support and love me no matter what. And we are going to support and love you no matter what. Because the tough times in life, the dark times in life, or if I lash out at someone in a way that isn't appropriate, my community is going to understand that. And they're going to understand that I'm on a learning journey. I'm on a learning journey. And I am learning how not to do that anymore. I am learning how to put on the mind of God. Put on the mind of God and be more loving, be more kind, be more peaceful, be more centered, be more healthy, be more solid, be more clear, be wiser. I am learning how to do all of that and praise God I got spiritual community to learn to do that stuff in. Because, as Parker Palmer says, the tribulations of life call us to the spiritual journey. How many of you are in church because something went sideways? And I just needed some support. It is so a call to the spiritual path, right? We're like, what is, what is the meaning of life? Because look what happened. So many of us are called to the conscious spiritual path because life got uncomfortable. Yes? Parker Palmer. The tribulations of life call us to the conscious spiritual journey. Enlightenment comes from being in relationship with others. Enlightenment comes from being in conscious relationship with others. Spiritual community can absolutely provide you with that. You see, the thing is, is it's easy to be all holy meditating on a mountaintop. Yes? Can you be holy when the person you are with is being short-tempered? Can you be love when something uncomfortable is unfolding around you? Can you be love? Can you borrow the mind of God and put on that wisdom and that love and that grace and extend to others grace? How much grace have you been given in your life? Can you circulate and give that grace to others? Because the outer is the inner, and the inner is the outer. Take a breath with me. So let's uh, try a little exercise here. You ready? I invite you to just briefly, for a moment, close your eyes. And to tap into your inner wisdom, the thing within you that is connected to the infinite wisdom of God. Allow yourself to connect to that wisdom. And allow yourself to hear this question and answer from your infinite wisdom. Do you want to be around people who love and support you? Do you want to be around people who love and support you? Do you want to be around people who care enough to challenge you to learn and grow? Do you want to be around people who care enough to challenge you to learn and grow? Do you want to be around people who encourage you, who inspire you to greatness? And do you want to be around people who see you and know you for the divinity you are? And give thanks for the wisdom that's been given you here. And when you're ready, open your eyes. How many yeses did you get?
Do you want to be around people who love and support you, who care enough to challenge you? And the interesting thing about this question is sometimes we don't even know we're challenging you, right? Sometimes it's super conscious. I'm going to challenge you right now. And then sometimes it's just not so conscious. I'm just doing whatever I do and it challenges you, right? Do you want to be around people who encourage you and inspire you to your greatness? Do you want to be around people who see you and know you for the divinity that you are? Do you want that? I want that. Guess what? If you even got one out of three yeses, one out of four yeses, that means you want spiritual community because that's what we do in spiritual community. That's what we do. The inner is the outer, and the outer is the inner, and we support one another in knowing our wholeness by giving us opportunities to practice and by allowing us to learn and grow internally. How beautiful is that? I want to be in spiritual community. You see, spiritual community provides so many blessings, doesn't it? How many of you feel blessed by your association here? (laughs) Right? Me too. I am speaking for me. This is because when I was going down the list, like, what does spiritual community offer me? This is my list. And maybe it's your list too. You see, spiritual community healed me. And it continues to heal me every day. I kept thinking I would be healed one day and I'd have to quit doing the work. I'd, I'd get to quit doing the work, right? But if you're done, You're not paying attention. It's time to grow some more. Because none of us is done. Spiritual community has healed my belief in separation to the degree that it's healed today. And I put before you, that is the only thing that needs to be healed. If we can heal our belief in separation and duality and good and bad and right and wrong and you and me and them and us, if we can heal that and embrace a sense of oneness and know the spiritual truth that there is only one thing happening and we're just all running around in it thinking we're separate. If we can heal that false belief in separation and duality, everything else heals itself. Can you see how that might be? Because suddenly I start behaving differently because you are at one with me. Because suddenly I come to understand that everything I do, say, think, impacts everything around me. And for me, being in spiritual community has healed me at least to the degree it's healed today. It just constantly surprises me. Oh, (laughs) I can't believe I didn't know that before when I have these insights and revelations, right? And so to the degree that I understand oneness and unity today, that healing has happened in spiritual community with people who challenge me, who support me, who love me, who see and know the divinity in me. And that might be true for you too. Spiritual community has supported me. And and the, the funny thing about how that works is spiritual community supported me, yeah. But you know, it didn't fully support me until I started giving. You know, I sat in the back row, some of you guys know this, for many years I sat in the back row at Seattle Unity, kind of just going, well, these people are pretty weird, but (laughs) there's something going on here that maybe, you know, I was in my 20s, what did I know? Um, But then I moved to Bellingham and I started going to the Unity Church in Bellingham. And I actually, in that environment, finally committed to serve. And that is where I found support, which is ironic, right? Because you think you're giving, but that's our reading today, right? Giving is receiving, receiving is giving. And suddenly I began to realize how supported I was because people knew me, they saw me, they loved and they supported me, they encouraged me to my greatness, they saw me for the divinity that I was. But not until I got engaged, not until I started to serve. When I was hiding in the back row, it was an nth there. But to really be supported, I opened my heart to serving. And the interesting thing about that is be, people began to rely on me. Uh-oh. <laughs> right? But what I began to realize is, oh, I'm relying on them. 
right? I'm relying on what's happening here, and it's safe to be relied on. It's safe to rely on others. I serve, and I am served by, by serving. The interesting thing about community is it both supports and challenges us, right? It's kind of interesting, isn't it? Because there were times I didn't feel like showing up for my service. Or I didn't like how I had to interact with someone when I was engaging in service. And it was always their fault, right? But what I began to learn is that being with people who love and support me, who care enough to challenge me, who encourage me, who see my divinity, supports me absolutely, but it also challenges me. Yes? And there are times that that felt difficult to me, but it grew me. Ultimately, the challenges supported me. When I open my heart and really look at the big picture. And the other thing that I realized community really gave me is a connection to something greater than I am. Yes? I mean, right now, except for the people who are at home watching the Seahawks game, (laughs) just saying, you are connected to something greater than you are, right? And not only are you connected to a greater body of individuals who are here to deepen and grow in God and open their hearts more fully, not only are you connected to the ones in this room, but do you know how many Unity churches there are doing what we're doing today? Like 450, I think, something like that. And we have Unity churches in um, Kenya, and we have Unity churches in Nairobi, and we have Unity churches in Europe, and we have Unity churches few in Asia, All over the world, you are connected to a network of people who have made the spiritual commitment to learn and grow. How cool is that? I love that idea. Go look at our bulletin board. There's a conference in Kenya in February. I think you should go. (laughs) How cool would that be? You see, we are connected to others who are doing the same work, and as we grow and expand in consciousness, so do they. And as they grow and expand in consciousness, so do they, because the inner is the outer, and the outer is the inner. And we're not one or the other. We have to be both to learn and grow and evolve in our spiritual understanding. And so we create structures in which we can do that, like you know, church buildings and communities and and, and organizations, and boy, you want to you know, be challenged to learn and grow, affiliate with an organization, right? Boom, please. But if we remember that we are here to evolve, to borrow the mind of God, to put on the spiritual truth of oneness and unity and recognize and know that there is no separation, there is only one thing happening, and spiritual community provides us with the place where we can practice and know that in a way that is oh so loving. And that doesn't mean easy. Do you get that? Oh so loving. Oh so anchored in the loving heart of God. Oh so anchored in wisdom and intelligence and an intention and to open to our hearts purpose. to evolve and learn and grow. Who's down for some of that? So let's be about it. Let's turn within and get grateful for this community. Put our attention on what's working. Because when we put our attention on what's working, we are using the law of attention to grow that. So I invite you to turn within to take the sacred breath with me. And as you breathe, simply bring to mind this community, any community, any group that you are part of that comes together with common purpose. And begin to recognize all of the ways that this spiritual community other communities in which you have come together for common purpose, begin to recognize how your participation has blessed you. (sighs) 
And as you pay attention to this feeling of blessing, begin to cultivate an awareness of a rich, deep gratitude. Begin to recognize that something greater than we are is operating throughout the universe. And this something greater than we are is calling us to grow, to expand, to be more than we have ever been before. And this infinite something provides us with the environments, with the experiences that grow us according to our willingness to grow. Breathing in and breathing out. Open your heart and mind more fully than you ever have before to the presence of the living one, that which moves you, that which breathes you, that which beats your heart, that which flows the blood through your veins and arteries. You cannot be separate from the living one. Get grateful for the community that inspires you, that challenges you, that opens you so fully to an awareness of this presence. Give thanks for those who have come together to create this mighty community, for those who serve, for those who say yes to God's idea for this beloved spiritual community. Allow yourself now to simply wallow in a sense of gratitude for the beauty, for the bounty, for the love that is this spiritual community. And so, with a grateful heart, I close this message knowing that we have been lifted and inspired, knowing that we have been transformed by the renewing of our minds and hearts, that God is good, that all is well, and something wonderful is happening here. I call it all good, and so it is. Amen.